So, thank you for coming. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Keith, I'm a librarian, and I'm going to talk about the library and stuff. Um, that's a picture of the library here. I don't know if you've seen it yet. Yeah, just at the very bottom. Mm -hmm. Propping up the entire institution. Um, so, I'm going to talk about um, why you should use the library, uh, where the library is, not physically, but you know, electronically as well. Uh, a little bit about searching and when you found things, how to you know think about evaluating information. Uh, and referencing a little bit about that, because I think you've already done a bit of referencing. Is that right? <coughs> Had it mentioned at all in any way, shape, or form? So I'll go into a bit more detail. Um, but yeah, if you've got questions, library questions, preferably, um, <laughs> please let me know. To shout out, um, but I'll, I'll get on. And if anything needs reiterated, just again to say, could you go for it? So, why should you use the library? Um, because it's there. Um, you sign up to each module, uh, you have three modules a semester, and each module uh, should have a reading list attached to it. And that reading list will consist of many things, but primarily there'll be usually a, a, a core text or a central textbook that the academic has recommended to support their teaching. And where the academic has informed me of that reading list, um, I'll have bought copies of that core text. Now, unfortunately, I don't have enough money to buy a core text for everyone, so there are limited in numbers. But, we are in the 21st century, and so sometimes these books are available as e-books, and where an e-book is available, I'll have bought that. And what you will find usually in the module is that there may well be a reading list link, and it'll take you through to this wonderful page that'll tell you where the books are on the shelf, but if it's an electronic book, it will link you to the e-book. Um, similarly, you will get journal articles recommended to you, and some of these might be academic journals, so peer-reviewed, 15 pages long, quite dry I'm afraid, um, but top-notch, scholarly, theoretical pieces of work. And you'll also get linked to other types of article, so that might be less academic, but still very relevant. So for example, the CIPD, Chartered Institute of Personal Development. They've got their own magazine called People Management. Um, People Management. That's not, strictly speaking, an academic title. But because it's from a professional body and it's practitioners writing in it, and especially in a subject like HRM, it's very worthwhile and very useful. So what you might find in those types of articles is um, where someone's written a scholarly article and it's theoretical, it's maybe a practitioner's shown where they've put that theory into practice, what's worked, what hasn't worked, what they had to change, that sort of thing. So again, very useful. And you'll be guided to these through your reading list, and that's great. And you'll get assessments, and you'll use these things that you've been guided to, to use within your work. But what I'd like to kind of recommend is that you, you get used to wider reading. So you find your own material, you find other articles, other books. Uh, why? Well, I, I've said more sources, better marks. And obviously I can't guarantee that at all. It depends how you use them. And I don't do the marking. But when you think that there's maybe 30, 40 people all answering the same assessment, and not all academics are the same, but I've certainly had several speak to me and they say that when they mark a piece of work, they don't actually start at the beginning and read through the assessment. They'll go to the back and look at the reference list. Because that reference list will tell them what research you've done. Because within that reference list, you'll probably see a reference to the course text and the recommended journal articles and what have you, and that's great but they'll go, well, I'm only going to get so much from that. 
if they see an article from another source or another textbook or whatever, they might think, oh, that's interesting. <coughs> so it kind of sets you out a little bit as well. But the other reason for doing it is that I'm assuming all of you will, will go on to do a dissertation at the end of the day. Now, unlike your assessments, a dissertation, you ask the question, you don't get a question set. And there certainly isn't a read list. You've got to make that up for yourself. You've got to find the literature when you're doing your literature review. And if you can get used to doing this, and when you come to do your lit review for your dissertation, it should be easier, he says, hopefully. Yeah. So does that, that make sense, what I'm saying? So it's, and this is where we come in, because we've got access to all this stuff through databases, which is a very boring name. Um, they're like search engines rather than databases, I think. Databases sounds like spreadsheets and stuff. But, um, and they're focused on academic literature. So there'll be various publishers, and some are aggregators, so you get access to a whole lot more. And that's where you'll find quality academic sources. <coughs> but as it's the business school, we recognise that there's other types of information that you might be looking for as well. Uh, so we have other types of electronic resources available to you that are, if you like, they're used in the corporate world, so they might be things like market research reports, um, some company information, how that fits in with HRM, trying to think, you might want to look at various companies and then see if they've got policies or whatever. Um, what you might want is statistical information. So for example, one of our databases I know will give you employment figures and it will break it down by gender, by age group, by full time, by part time. So if you're doing something on that, that might be something that you'd want to use to add in to, to make your point. But I guess primarily it will be academic resources that you're looking for, uh, journal articles. And unfortunately, we don't subscribe to everything. Um, but don't worry. Um, if we don't have it, or if you go online and find it, you might see something that says, like, oh, to view this article, it'll cost you 30 pounds or something like that. Never pay, never pay the money. Um, get in touch with me. Um, I can see if I can find it for you elsewhere. Or, I'm very fortunate being in Edinburgh, there's lots of different libraries, so the National Library of Scotland, for example, they might have it in print, we can send you there. But if it's an article, fill out an interlibrary loan. We've got an online interlibrary loan form. You put in the details of the, the journal, the article, the author, the year, etc. We get in touch with the British Library, and if they've got it, they'll PDF, send the PDF to your Napier email account. So really, we, we buy all these things because you know, part of my job is to know what's being taught and support them appropriately with the various uh, resources that we get. So these have been purchased because they do cover your subject area. And I'm going to be very patronising and say it's much better than using Google. Because um, Google will get you so far. Uh, Google Scholar will get you further. But why use Google Scholar when you've got the databases? Would be my answer. I'm going to be super patronising now and say, Wikipedia. Um, yeah, I, I quite like Wikipedia, but I would never obviously quote it. But what I find, um, so I've been doing this now for quite a few years, and uh, I don't have a business background. My undergrad degree was modern history and politics. Postgraduate librarianship. Here I am, obviously a business librarian, um, but it's it's not my job to kind of know the answer. It's my job to know where to find the answer. There's a subtle difference, and I'm sticking to it. Um, so I'll have business students come and say, "No, I'm looking for this and I'm not really sure what it's talking about. You find that whatever you study, there's a kind of vocabulary that goes around the topic, and if you're not sure of what something means, I pop into Wikipedia and it'll give me like an overview of what that topic is because you can trust it for that I think and what's useful about that is when you come to do a search you maybe picked up some more of the language so 
So you've got other phrases you can add or keywords you can put in that are related to the topic, thereby making your results a bit more focused and better. Does that make sense? You bang this? Good. Because what we're talking about here is information literacy. Um, and that's the other thing that the library gives. The library is this place of stuff or repository of books and journals and information. But you've got to know how to navigate it. And, um, and you do know how to navigate it because you do this every day. You know, pretty much everyone goes online every day. Fair. Google is now a verb. To Google something is that's how ubiquitous it's become. And so you already have these kind of skills. So for example, when you do a search uh, using Google, or maybe Bing, some people use Bing, I suppose. Um, you, how, there's no right or wrong answer here. Do many people go to the second page of results? It's, it's not right or wrong. Probably not. Studies have shown that when people use a search engine, they usually look at about the first five or six results. Does that sound familiar? And you'll notice on a the result, there's the link, and then there's a little bit of blurb underneath it. Right, that's like an abstract, for which I'll talk about later, actually. So you, based on that, you decide whether to click the link or not. And if you don't like what you see, you go back and you change your search terms and do the search again. Yeah? So you do this, you do this daily, you're always evaluating stuff. So just apply it in the academic, it's, not, it's no different. It really isn't any different. And once you've got your stuff and you're using it in your work, so you've paraphrased somebody and you've cited them, that's when the references bit comes in. So you've got to give credit to what you so, for me, the library isn't just this kind of monolithic place of materials. It's being able to use it and navigate it. I think it's part of the academic process. You wouldn't be able to produce quality academic work without these things. So I'm super important. <laughs> or the library is super important, not me. Okay, oh, no. Next. But we do have stuff. Um, and so some of you may do group work. And so when you do group work, you might want a place to meet as a group. And within the library, we've got these group study rooms. They are bookable a week in advance for up to two hours. Each room is kitted out with a network PC that you can log into. And that's hooked up to like a big screen, big plasma screen. If you prefer to work on your own device, there's all sorts of plugs and things that you can fit it in there so it comes up on the screen. They are group study rooms. We did have people booking them themselves and having luxurious single study cells, um, so we stopped that. Did, I did ask if you saw the library, didn't I? And you know where it is. Did you notice anything about it? It's, it's not got a roof. It's not got a ceiling, because mm -hmm. architects, yeah. <laughs> um, <coughs> who'd have thought? Um, so it gets quite noisy. So there is a quiet area, and that's around the back of the library, and it's like a big room, it's a bit bigger than this. And it's chairs and tables with PowerPoints on them if you've got your own device. There are some network PCs there, um, and there's a silent room as well. We, You'll find there's actually plug points available all over the campus, like the main foyer and stuff. Um, plugs and USB. People learn in different ways, people study in different ways. So we've tried to create as many environments as we can to make it good for you. Um, yeah, and Wi Fi, the whole building's wireless up. Have you seen that yet, Edge Room? It's really good. Books. Borrowing books, okay, so your matriculation card is your library card, and um, it says, forget that, you can borrow up to 15 items at a time, 
And when you borrow something, we kind of just automatically renew it. It says 12 weeks there for books, but it's actually 16 weeks now. After that, you can still keep hold of the book, just bring it back and we'll reissue it because we do trust you, but after 16 weeks, <laughs> we'd just like to see that it's still there. Um, in a trimester is 15 weeks, isn't it? So I think that was why it was the 16, so that oh it was right. the it entire... Wasn't secure. I do apologise. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you>. um, <laughs> but what you'll find is that you'll get these recall notices. So when you borrow something, every week we'll send you an email to your neighbour email saying, you have this on loan, it's due back here. You have this on loan, it's due back here. If someone else wants to borrow a book but it's on loan and they go through the system, they can place a hold on it and that triggers a recall. So if you've got the book that someone else wants, you'll get an email to your neighbour email and it'll say, can you bring this back please? Someone else wants it. <coughs> you've got seven days from today's message. So, if you borrowed the book today, and somebody went, oh, I was want that, and then they put a recall on it immediately, you'd at least have seven days for it. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but you really are expected to read an entire textbook cover to cover immediately. The whole, well, as I say it anyway, the whole point of the textbook is that you dip in as and when it's related to the teaching. Um, and in a lot of cases, the books are ebooks as well. So if, you, if you're part time, I know that kind of maybe sounds a bit draconian, um, but we'll work things out. Does that, does that make sense? Though? Please, if you do get a recall, please bring the book back because it's a, the fines have something like a pound a day that you're overdue with it. Um, I'd, I'd rather not have to take your money and spend it on other things, more important things. Um, but do, I suppose the thing is just keep an eye out on your, your name and email. Does that make sense? Okay. Why do you keep doing that? There we go. Um, so the library is part of information services as a whole, so that includes all the techie stuff. And there's this thing called the Virtual Desktop Service, which is an app that you can download to your iPad, Mac, laptop, um, tablet. If you've got a PC in the home, you can do it there. What does it do? It basically, once you get it running, it logs in and creates a Napier desktop on your machine. So for example, I've got a really old iPad from work, and I've got that, and it turns my iPad into a Microsoft Windows machine. And what that means is that I can access all my private data areas. So if I'm at home, sometimes I'll work from home occasionally, uh, and I can access everything. You have your own personal data area. So when you log into a machine here, you've got this personal data area that's got quite a lot of memory space in it. And you might save your work there. And if you did that, you could access it from home through the virtual desktop service. If you don't have antivirus software or office on your machine, you can get it free from us. Uh, mention the Wi-Fi, Edge your own. And then there's, other, there's all sorts of software apps that you can download. So these, for example, in Vivo, SAS, SPSS, they might not mean much to you at the moment. But if you do your dissertation, or when you do your dissertation, you might have some data that needs analysed. And in vivo, we'll go through qualitative data. And SAS or SPSS, they both look at um, quantitative, so statistical sort of stuff. Um, and you can use them, you can download them on your machines and stuff. That's great. So, that's the stuff. This is the <laughs> this is a good bit. Uh, finding information. So that's a nice picture. Can I ask you a quick question? Yes, of course. Um, about what's sorry? About double doing so as for example SPSS. Yeah. Um, so whether you use it in the past you need like a code yeah. to download it, would we get that from you or um, it's all it's 
It's all online, there's um, all the guidelines are on there, so you would get the key on that. Okay. You just thought, I mean, so you would get the instructions on how to actually download it, and it would yeah. then give you the key. And it's, I think it's licensed on a year by year yeah. basis. So. so, finding information, oh, where to look, there's so much stuff, it's so hard and difficult. Well, this man knew. Okay, um, yeah, it's downstairs. Um, but really, I'm not wanting to just talk to you about that. It's the um, it's the electronic material that's the, the, the key here because the, the library is now completely in the ether. Um, lots of different ways to get to the electronic stuff. My Napier page, have you had the benefit of that yet? Um, so there's links to the library there. Moodle, your virtual learning environment, so this is where all your module stuff's going to be. I suspect um, that's where you'll be most of the time. And there's links to library information and the libguide. These are my pages. Um, I obviously think they're fantastic. Um, I think they are very good because what I've done is I've put all stuff relating to business there. So you know anything you like is going to be relevant. And then we've got library search. So this will tell you, this is like our library catalogue, stroke discovery tool. So it will tell you where about on the shelf the books are. It will link you to ebooks. You can also find journal articles, e-journals, databases, and all sorts on it as well. Personally, if I was searching for articles, I would use a database rather than library search. But I'll explain that in a bit if I have time, which I should have. So this is what the library Moodle page looks like. You can't really see it. Um, at the top there, that breadcrumb is always there. So if you click on library, you'll come to this page. So that's general library information. Book of study. Um, and this block here has got the subject guide, so obviously business school. So if you click the business school subject guide, you get to this page. And that's me from a few years ago. Um, and this is my page. So in the middle there, you've got little videos showing you how to find an ebook, how to find journal articles. Um, this bit here is a calendar of events. And so part of my job is to do kind of sessions, drop in sessions, if you like, um, on various things. And so if you see something come up on there, book into it, come along. Um, it's quite frustrating. A lot of people sign up and then nobody comes. It's, it's quite disheartening at times. Um, <laughs> what is she? <laughs> but the thing is, is that it's quite interesting. There's this huge fight. You guys are master students, so you've seen it, done it. You know, you, you get these undergrads, and then they get and they get the dissertation. Then it's just like complete meltdown. And it's like, well, you know, I've been here for four years. You should. <laughs> anyway, but I still can't put this thing. So you see here, we've got the different links things. So there's your academic journal list, market research, company information, etc. Referencing and reference management. Library search looks a bit like this. Links to the subject list. And these are just some of the e-resources. Oh, sorry, I meant to ask. Um, it's, it's not a trick question again. So this is masters. Are, You don't have to answer if you want. How many of you have just finished an undergrad and are coming straight in? A few of you. So you, you guys are in the zone. You, you know kind of what you're doing. And, and so I think everybody else has been out of education for a little while and maybe a longer time or whatever. Do these names mean anything? I'm seeing a few nods. That's good. That's good. The reason I put these up and uh, it leads back to the whole thing about the libguide. You see something like Science Direct, and that's a database. Elsevier is the publisher, Dutch company. High quality, brilliant. But if you don't know, it says Science Direct, you think, well, I'm not doing physics or biology, okay? Or maybe that's just my theory, my brain. Or um, so I would say that's not a business database, but it is. Because mm -hmm. I suppose you've got social sciences. Mm -hmm. Leadership Quarterly 
is one of the best leadership journals that you can get. It's a four-star leadership journal, and the best way to access it is through Science Direct. And you go in and then you can search that exact journal. So if you're doing anything on leadership, and particularly in pod, for example, it's one of your topics, it's w the best place to look for leadership. For as one example of what I use it for on almost a weekly basis. My work here's done. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's brilliant. And you actually raise a really good point that I'll hopefully get onto a bit later, and that's mm -hmm. about when you're actually searching. Just to kind of sort of flip back a little bit, I said library search for, for finding articles and things. What library search is really good for is if you do get a journal title, <laughs> like Leadership Quarterly, but you don't know where it is, you can search library search and you find, find e-journal, and it's got a list of all our e-journals, A to Z. So if you type in Leadership Quarterly, you'd see the link, and it would take you through to the database that hosts it, but it takes you through to that journal homepage, if you like, within that database. And there's usually, in the databases, the search bar, and it'll just say search within this journal. So, for example, if you just went to Science Direct and typed in the keywords and did a search, it's looking for those keywords everywhere. If you find a journal that you think is re relevant to your area of study and find that and put your keywords in there, it's just going to search within that journal. But because it's in your area of study, the results should be relevant. Does that make sense? So that, that's actually, that's where they are. So my research is quite a good jumping off point for these things. And here's some more. Um, I'm not so worried about these. The top, the top five are all academic journal article databases. Wiley down to Sage, these are all different publishers. Okay, so it's all high quality academic journals, but all you'll get in those databases are those publishers' journals. The top one, ABI Inform, is what we call an aggregator. So it brings in stuff from lots of different publishers. In some cases, coveraging, coveraging? covers, for example, those four. Not everything on ABI will be in full text. <coughs> but if it isn't, there's a little find it button. And if we've got a subscription through another platform, it'll take you to it. And that's why I find ABI informal. Probably. I'd, if a student comes to me and says, I'm looking for information on X, that's where I would start. I'm not saying you have to. So it's, <laughs> it's up to you. Next, this is mostly newspapers with some company information. Um, passport, this is where you would get, I was talking about employment stats and things like that. You would get that there. <coughs> and other economic data, as well as market reports. And fame is basically balance sheets, so I'm not sure you would really use that in this subject, but you never know. Okay. There is an accounting section in your organisational context of HR, so one of the first modules that you all do does have an accounting element to it, um, but Andy, the, Andy Muffet, the lecturer, usually gives you kind of quite good insight into where you're searching and stuff. That would be where it could come up. Okay. We'd be in that one. I mean, it's really good. You, get, it, it shows you, you might look at HR companies as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you come and do a dissertation, you might be looking at people to contact. So you can you can actually do searches on that based on the industry and the location. So I could look up, you know, financial sector within Edinburgh or, you know, small medium enterprises within Edinburgh, <coughs> which can do it by amount of employees and turnover. <coughs> They're great fun, go and use them. Um, and if you've got any questions, also let me know. This, what's this? This is, looks a bit strange. This is browsing, this is what this is. It's another app. Oh, bother with that. Um, this is a journal app, and it links up the library search. So, leadership quarterly. You could find it on browsing and add it to your own little bookshelf. And it'll give you all the contents and then you can open it up and read the articles on your phone or tablet. But you can kind of download them to... I say this and it's, it's, it sounds... <coughs> I'm, I'm serious about this, but you can read it on the bus going home or something like that. I mean, I know that sounds really, like, boring, but 
it's useful for that. I think as well, once you open it up, I, I don't know if it stays in the memory of your phone, so you don't need like a wireless thing to review. But what it also does is, <coughs> um, if you say follow a particular journal, if there's a new edition comes out, it'll ping you the table of contents and things like that, so you, you can keep it up to date. And you access all these resources if you follow the links. If you're off campus, the first time you use it, or in your browser session, you'll be asked to log in. So a lot, an Edmund Napier login box will come up, you just pop in the username, the trick number, and then your password. And it's the same username and password as you would use for logging into Moodle uh, or your email. And if there's any problems with these, let us know because we can fix it. I, I personally can't, but my colleagues in the library can because they know who to speak to and how to work with things. So I'm not talking about stuffing things. <laughs> <laughs> stuff and things. Um, but yeah, if you do have a problem accessing this, if you're trying to access a database and it's not happening for you, let me know and we can work out what it is that's happening. Um, and similarly, individual journal articles, if you can't get them, let me know. You find often, especially when you go through Google, you know, and you Google a, a journal and it'll take you sort of through to it and then it'll ask you to pay for it, as you said. I know, I'm sorry, I know we're not meant to use Google, but you do use Google. Well, and so, uh, <laughs> if, 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 I've got, if I've got time, um, and hopefully I will do, I'll, I'll, there's a little trick you can do with Google Scholar that makes it easier for you. I don't know why I'm showing you because I don't want to use it, but I'll use it anyway. Anyway, sorry. Actually, so, um, more boring stuff, evaluate and retrieve results. So, this is the sort of stuff that you do automatically <coughs> when you're looking at stuff. Um, be it um, a film review. Am I going to watch this film? No. Uh, okay. um, when you get an article, you've got to remember this academic writing is. Difficult. With respect, it's a bit dull. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's quite dry, mm -hmm. you know, but it's supposed to be. Um, and it's not like a magazine article that might only be a couple of pages, you're talking like 20 pages sometimes of stuff. Um, so that's why you should read the abstract first. And then once you've found it and you think this is good, these are the questions you're asking yourself. So, is it a reliable source of information? Well, if you've got it through one of our databases, then yes it is, because these are academic publishers. If you found it off of Google, it might well be. But then you've got to work that out. Who's written it? You know, if it's a web page, is it actually authored? You know. Or is it a company? And if it's a company, is there bias in it? Are they trying to sell you something? Are they trying to, do you see what I mean? So if you use our database, it's fine. Is it useful for the problem in hand? And this is what I mean, just because some, a result comes back in a search doesn't mean it's really going to work. So you have to read it or read the abstract to work out if it's useful. Is the data publication appropriate? I, I would never say you can't read things from 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years ago. I would, I would never say that. Um, that's up to you. What I would say is if you do use a slightly older um, article, are you sure that people haven't used that since and written about it and either built on the theory that's used there or completely blown it out of the water? <coughs> I think also if you're looking at organisations and case studies and things like that, what might have happened in, say, for example, the National Health Service 10 years ago is, is completely different to how it is now. So things evolve. Um, there will be certain texts that are seminal that will that, that, that kind of, you have to quote it. Um, so just be careful of that. Is it obtainable? You've read an abstract. It's really good. You want to read the article. Can you get it? If you can't get it in full text, speak to me and we can try and get it for you. But, thinking about your time scales, when's your deadline, can you get it in time? You can't, you can't use something as a reference if you've not read it. You can't base something on the citation. Is the level of information correct? Um, 
it's kind of like useful for the problem in hand. Where have you found it? Is it an academic source? If it's just off the internet, is it really relevant to what you're doing? Master's level? You know, is it, is it for like high school children, for example? <coughs> like that. So have a think about that. And then is the information fresh? Do you know this already? What I mean by this is that uh, you'll do a lot of reading and you'll read an article and it'll maybe say, uh, I think, A. Okay, so you think, well, that's good, I'm going to use that. You read another article and it agrees with that first article. So you think, good, two people are coming to the same conclusion, we've got corroboration, brilliant, I can quote them both. You read another article that's the same, you're like, like, oh, you don't need to keep reading the same thing all the time. It's great to have one, two, maybe even three sources all agreeing and coming to the same conclusion. But if what you're then reading afterwards is basically a regurgitation of that, then you kind of need to move on. Yeah, does that make sense? And you'll do that in a split second. You'll do all these things as a split second. Um, this is a pun. <laughs> so these are records, as in vinyl. <laughs> I did this one year, and I said, oh, I suppose it's all CDs, and somebody said, what's a CD? <laughs> um, but this, 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 this is just a kind of teacher. Keeping records, brilliant records, listen to all those albums are fantastic. Um, it's a Walker special. Um, keep records. What I'm meaning by this is when you do a search, you should think about uh, writing down the database that you've used, the keywords that you've used, any references that you've found. I mean, you can download the PDFs of the articles. So do that and keep them safe. Because you might have to retrace your steps and find things again. Um, because you have to do references. And if you can't properly reference something, you can't use it. Because that, that's just the, the rules. Um, I had a student once, an undergrad student, final year dissertation, and they phoned up and said, look, I, I'm, really, I'm looking for this article. It's central to my thesis. Um, but I, I've lost it. I don't, I don't know what it's called or who wrote it. Or, okay. Where did you look for it? Oh, I think it was this database, right? So we looked in that database. And what was it about? And we found it. And that was great because then the student could then reference throughout their dissertation. If we didn't find it, then the dissertation was kind of blown. They would have had to have found another reference to a new word of it. So it's a bit like um, Theseus and the Minotaur, you know, in the labyrinth. And Theseus went in with ball of wool to get to the middle. Classical education, eh? fantastic. Um, I didn't have one. Um, um, this is what this is like. This is your ball of wool to navigate the labyrinth that is the internet. <laughs> Sorry for the poor illusion, but you kind of understand what I'm saying. Good. So, because you've got to do a reference list, you've got to acknowledge the sources you've consulted, the ones that, well, not so much the ones you've consulted actually, that's wrong. That's a bibliography. Acknowledge the sources you've cited. So there's a difference. You're asked to do a reference list. <coughs> All that should appear in your reference list, if you've made a citation in your work, it appears in your reference list. If it's in your reference list, there's a citation. Okay? It's, <coughs> it's not a bibliography, which is just a list of things that you've read. It has to relate to the material within your work. And we use a system called the APA6 referencing system. Anybody heard of that one? A few heads nodding, I like it. It's a global standard, right? So if you get stuck and you can't find what you're looking for on my 
help sheets or whatever, just Google it. How do I reference a tweet APA6 style? And it'll tell you, and you can say that that's okay. We used to use a system called Harvard. There's a lot of right. APA and Harvard look pretty much the same. They're called author date systems. The trouble with Harvard is there's about a million variations. <coughs> and actually, I don't think Harvard used Harvard. Someone told me that once. <laughs> if it's on, like, it might be on. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's APA is this global standard. Harvard, we. A long time ago, there was three schools within the business school, and each had their own referencing system, and each used Harvard. And two of the schools, Harvard's, were the same, but one was slightly different. And when the schools merged to form a faculty, what referencing system do we use? And that's where I sort of thought maybe APA, so everybody's at the same. Does that make sense? It's, it's really quite simple. Um, this is what it looks like for a book. You've kind of got this. <laughs> Um, formula at the front, and if you think about it, the, the difference is every every component is like a sentence, and at the end of every sentence, you would put a full stop. So, author surname, comma, their initial, full stop, bracket, the year of publication, close bracket, full stop. The title of the book in italics. If it's after the first edition, you would put in second ed, third ed, fourth ed. Then where it's published, and then who the publisher is. And if you're not sure of these things, if you look on the library catalogue, it should tell you within the bibliographic details. Or if you've got the book in front of you, turn the page, <coughs> and it'll tell you where and who the publishers are. So in your piece of work, your in-text citation, if it's a quotation, i.e. a direct quote, then all you do is brackets, the author, or authors, comma, the year, comma, and the page number. Those brackets. If it's a direct quotation. I suspect you're advised not to have too many direct quotations. What you want to do is paraphrase. So, in this case, you might say, as Priestner and Tilly bracket, 2012, close bracket, opined, libraries are magic, that sort of thing. Um, so you don't, need, you don't need that, you don't need the page number because it's paraphrased. And the same goes for journals. The only difference between APA and Harvard with online material is that, if I remember rightly, under Harvard, you would put in at the end something like um, date accessed or date retrieved. Um, don't you worry about that. All you put in is, so you've got the author, author's year, title of the article in normal font, title of the journal in italics, then the volume and the part, and then the page range, and then this thing, the DOI, the digital object identifier. If you don't have that, well, go on, go on. next slide. What is a DOI? You know how books have ISBNs? It's an ISBN, not an ISBN number, because that's what the N stands for. Library joke, okay. Um, so the DOI is similar, and it's the individual, each article gets its own number that is identifiable by. If you don't have a DOI, because not all journal articles do, then all you would do is say retrieve from and put the web address. And that's similarly what you would do if you were looking at a website. So, you know, author BBC bracket 2012, type uh, italics, title of the web page, you know, retrieve from bbc.co.uk. But you never use both. It's either or. Okay. You'll get the hang of it. It's easy. There's more information on my libguide about referencing. And what you might want to think about when you come to do your dissertation especially, 
is using a reference manager. I don't know if anyone's used one before. The university's got a thing called EndNote, and that's a networked application. So if you had the virtual desktop, you could use it from home. But if you don't want to use that, the one I would recommend is a thing called Mendeley, which is available free online and you can download it and you don't have to worry about virtual desktops and things like that. Um, these are essentially electronic filing cabinets. So if you've downloaded a PDF, you can basically drag and drop it into it and it stores it for you and you can make lots of nice, this is a librarian coming out, but you can make lots of nice subfolders and put things in its place and make it all nice so that you know that that's your lit review, that's chapter one, that's your methodology and stuff like that. So you've, you've, you've moved all these things over. And then what's really cool about it is that it works with Microsoft Word. And so you're typing up your piece of work and you insert your citation so it drops a citation in properly with the brackets and the date and stuff. But while it's done that, it's also added the full reference to your reference list at the end. And it's very clever because if you use, say, Walker first, that would be at the top. Um, but if you put in somebody called Andrews, it would know that A comes before W. And so it will alphabetize your list as well. They work, they're good but you still have to check the information that's going in because they're only, it's only as good. If you have to manually enter a, 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 a reference, if you miss a bit out, it'll output wrong. So you still have to check the reference. It has to be consistent. <coughs> I will be probably, I would imagine I'll be running some sessions on how to use it, but if anyone needs any help, whatever, we can just give a shout. Well, I had to have this slide today. <laughs> um, sorry, part-time people, you might not be here. Um, library tours next week to go around a small library. Um, do it. Any questions? That's my email address. Um, please get in touch. Uh, if what? Well, um, if you've got any library inquiries, then yeah, get in touch. Um, Part-time people, I was thinking, I do this with, I've not put it up here, but I, I've got Skype and things like that. So if it was easier, because the chances are when you come in, I don't know if you come in during the day or in the evening or whatever, so apologies for that. Um, if it's after five o'clock, there's every chance I'm, I'm away. Um, with the greatest respect. But if you can Skype during the day or whatever, then email me and I can do that. If, if there's some, because I do, we've got overseas students, international students, global online students, and you know I, I can do that, and because you can share your screen with Skype. So what I would say to people here all the time is, if you need any assistance arrange an appointment and we can sit down at a machine and we can go through things. I can easily do that online as well. So it's, it's there for you. But no, just blown away by library stuff. Fantastic. What was that, sorry, what was that um, art name? Not the Edmo, but the, um, the other one you mentioned. Um, so there's the virtual desktop, yeah. there's browsing. Is it Mendeley? Mendeley. Yeah. Okay, Mendeley is another um, uh, reference manager. I've got a few minutes left, like literally. Um, so I was kind of I was going to just show you where things are and take you through things. That probably makes more sense than listening to me. Right. So, okay, as fate would have it, we're in Moodle. Um, so there's me. So you can see there's a link to the library there, so we'll click on that. And then further down, this is a really old screen, so it's not a white screen that you would have. So if we come all the way down, there's the subject guides, here's the business school. Yes, I accept that. 
it's not one to show my film, that's fine. Here's my academic journals, there's a film. You just follow the links. Uh, one thing, if, if you do a search, so let's just say human resource manager. So you can see it's bringing up, like Google, if you start typing in things, it starts bringing up stuff that, that's related to what you've written. So I'm just going to do HR, human resource management, and it's going to bring back millions, 1.28 million things. And you can see where your keywords have been brought up. This probably won't bring out a lot, but if you're using phrases, um, if, if you type the phrase with quotation marks around it, what happened to begin with there was it looked for everything with human, everything with resource and everything with management. And like a crazy Venn diagram, the top results will be where those three circles cross. But what I'm doing here is I'm not looking for human or resource. I'm just looking for the instances where human resource management as a phrase exists. Okay? And that reduced it to 167,000. So we've, we've, we've kind of thrown out quite a few just by doing that. And then what I would do in this database is I would narrow it to say scholarly journals. So all you're getting is the academic stuff. And then we might think of putting a connector in uh, and I'm doing a phrase again for your engagement. What's that got with? I will now down to 2432 and I'll just say, let's say public sector. Do you see what, how, what I'm doing? I'm just adding to it and, and drilling down. And, and now I've got nothing because I didn't press the button. And there we go. 590. So, that's still quite a lot, but do you see my kind of reasoning, what I was doing there? And then you might think, well actually, despite what Keith said, I don't care about old stuff. And so I've narrowed it to 2017, 18 without 158. That's quite manageable. What you get on the database, so for example this one, the American Review of Public Administration, it's not available on this database. Do we have it elsewhere? I doubt it. But there's the find it button. So this opens up library search and it says, you do have it, <laughs> it's in Sage. I genuinely didn't know that by the way. <laughs> this is just a pure fluke. So I'm going to click on that link and it's now going to open up this article in the host database. And, and there you go. Nice green unlock site, so that means it's available. There's the abstract. Uh, yeah. Why is it? Why is the full text? The ready bit at the bottom next to this. Oh yeah, download the PDF. Sorry. So I would download the PDF, and it would open it up, and then you can print or save it or whatever. I actually sometimes you get the chance to view the article as a web page. Personally, I would always view it as the article because if there's any figures or diagrams or things like that. When you view it as a web page, you sometimes have to click that as a link and it'll open up another page with the diagram on it and my brain can't cope with that actually, so it's much easier if it's on, oh yeah, trigger one here, you know, instead of flipping it. Anyway, uh, with this database, I'll show you a little trick. So let's say we were looking at this one and we thought, well, this is really good. There's the PDF, yeah, yeah. With ABI, see this button here that says site? Click that, select APA 6, change, boom, there's your reference. So you could cut and paste that and shove that at the end of your thing if you wanted. You still have to do your citation properly, but I'm just putting it out there. Um, the last thing, because that's 2 o'clock now, is I'm just going to show you Google Scholar, okay? As much as it pains me. Can I ask a question? Yeah. In terms of printing in the library, do you get a quota or 
Can you print as much as you want? It's five pence a sheet, I'm afraid. For everything, you yeah. don't get allowance. Um, you might get an initial kind of overdraft, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> so you can print things off to begin with, and then once, yes. but that would still always be there. I think that's how it used to be. Um, the, the printers in the library are these big multifunctional devices. So they also work as photocopiers and scanners. Um, does scanning cost anything? I don't think so. Yeah, five people. Yeah, five people. Um, there's a machine outside the library that's um, like a kiosk. And if you type in your trip number and stuff like that, and then chuck your money in, that's what adds your print credit. Onto. Um, <coughs> we kind of looked at it. I think it's as cheap as we can make it. I think. Um, so, yeah, it's unfortunately we do have to. It's not my choice. <laughs> so. um, right, sorry, Google Scholar. Right, so if I. This is my favourite one NHS and HRM. Right. So you do a Google Scholar search, and you'll find all this stuff. And you'll maybe get links to PDFs and full text there. Okay? And you think, okay. But then you'll maybe click on other ones and you'll be like, why am I not getting this? If I just go back, if you go to the, this, these three lines here, and then this little cog, which is settings. And if you go to library, yeah, okay, I'll move that. And type in Edinburgh Napier. Spell Edinburgh. You'll see this little thing comes up. So we save that. And I'll do the search again, NHS, HRM, and this is where I like to be really quick. So, that's the original search results, okay? And once I'd set the library link to Edinburgh Napier, this is what we get now. So you see this view at that Napier comes up. So when you're at home, searching away, even on campus now, because it's not IP recognised. Um, if you, even with, with that, if you click on that link, you're not going to get to the outcome. In fact, it, let's just try here. Because it doesn't use, so there's the PDF for example. So I'm going to click PDF. And it's saying I've not got access options. Because it doesn't know that I'm from Edinburgh Napier. If I then go back to the original link, but go to view it at Edinburgh Napier, what this does, we basically sold our soul to Google, and they can now get into the library catalog and stuff. This is actually saying it's in ProQuest ABI. It, it's, this link's not going to work, because this link's always in the tool. Oh no, it does work. Okay. And there it is, and there's just full text PDF. So does that, does that kind of make sense? But really, why go to all that problem? Why go to all that faffing about settings and things like that when you can just use our databases? Anyway, look, on that note, I shall leave you because um, five past two, I've gone over time. Was that, hopefully, that was useful.